unity, and the antidote to division. As we grapple with the unprecedented times we are in, the inequalities that have been illuminated by COVID-19 and the death of George Floyd, let us focus our minds on unity. Unity in this context is a genuine acceptance and celebration of diversity. It requires honesty, it requires maturity, it requires humility and harmony. It must be expressed inwardly and outwardly. It can't be legislated, for we can't legislate morality. It needs to be a change of heart for each of us, to be bold and courageous, to face the uncomfortable, and emerge victorious on the other side. Where we do not see ourselves above the other, where we appreciate and celebrate every nation, tribe, people, and language. Where we acknowledge we are many and different but one. This is unity, an antidote to division. Esther Jamera. Amplifying Voices, Mending Divides, Concluding Remarks by Jenny Lewis, she, her, Director of Human Resources and Organisational Development, Lee's Teaching Hospitals Trust. This anthology of stories was written in direct response to the killing of George Floyd in America and to the health inequalities laid bare by the COVID-19 pandemic. As I write this, sadly, the extremely unpleasant reaction to the Euro 2020 football team shows us, as if we needed another reason, how much we still need these stories to be told today. What I find so moving about this book is that it's so much more than the book. It's our journey as a trust and the way these stories have come together, how my colleagues have written about their experiences from the heart with no judgment and it's the way they've placed learning as their principal aim, which is so inspiring. We've worked together, we've increased our understanding and our awareness, and sat with discomfort and sadness. We've had to educate ourselves and put aside what we thought we understood to be true. It has been difficult and there is still much more that we need to do. But we've harnessed the learning and we've translated this into meaningful actions of allyship. And it's these actions that I hope will give Leeds Teaching Hospitals Trust the greatest chance of forging a fully inclusive culture where everyone can flourish. This book captures the moment in time that I, as an NHS executive leader, am determined will never be lost. Here at Leeds Teaching Hospitals, we have, like many others, a number of equality initiatives underway. But most importantly, we're bringing into the open and working with the unspoken barriers that often keep people in our trust apart, such as race, culture and history, roles and hierarchy, emotions and sometimes suffering. We're doing this by coming together, building trust through listening to each other's stories and committing to enabling everyone to thrive. This is a huge challenge, but one we are committed to see through. This book is a testament to my colleagues' confidence and power to be transformative and of our collective commitment to make our trust discrimination-free and the best place to work for all. I thank Esther Jamera and all those who have contributed to the book and gifted it to our trust, and to Mohamed Balal and our BME staff network without whom none of this change would be happening. You are truly inspirational. Our biggest challenge now is to engender the realisation of the need for change in all our 20,000 staff. This is something we are absolutely committed to do. And we can do this by coming together, building trust and listening to each other's stories, 
This book takes an important step forward on our path to achieving this. Imagine, what could we do if everyone in the NHS embraced these stories, reflected and took positive action so that we can be free from discrimination and thrive together? It's our individual contributions, no matter how small, that collectively will make this change. So I'm asking you, having read the stories within these pages, what are you committed to do now to unite us?